Good evening, Toastmaster of the day. Good. Welcome guests and fellow Toastmasters. Good evening. Good, evening. Good evening. What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. This is, a, is an excerpt from the Shakespearean play, Romeo and Juliet. Well, as you know, you've all heard of Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet is the story of the Shakespearean play where it is a love affair between two of different families. There's Romeo of the Montagues, and there's Juliet, who's a Capulet, who would let their undying love, as they say here, by any name, they would let it be as sweet as the love that they have for one another. What's in a name? If we go to the dictionary, the name will be defined as what some, number one is, what someone or somebody or something is called. Number two, an uncomplimentary, uncomplimentary description word about somebody. And number three, a reputation. When we talk about what somebody is called or what somebody wants to be called or what something is called, it's a word, a term, or a phrase by which somebody or somebody something is known and distinguished from other people or things. There's your first name, your Christian name. There's your forename, your given name, your surname, your family name, your middle name, your maiden name. It can be your pet name, your nickname, your last name, a handle, or a moniker. Remember, when we're talking about names, that's the first thing after your breath that you're probably given in this life. True, it's not who you are, but it's what you're identified as. When you're given your name, this has been something that your family, your parents have thought of, long lasting as to the nine months that they carried you, they thought about what your name was gonna be. It's gonna be a family name. Is it gonna be a name, something special? Is it gonna be a historic name? So it's great importance and significance in identity. It becomes your brand. It becomes your trademark, so to speak. For men, we carry the family name through our sons. And for women, you've chosen, as you've chosen the man of your life, you surrender your name and accept his. It's no false step, no small step, it is. The name is very important. Just to give an example of some of the people that we have here, Linda, did you know that in Spanish, your name is beautiful? When you say the word Linda in Spanish, it means beautiful. Sean, your name is Irish and English. It means wise. Be fitting, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Sean, Penn, Sean, John, all wise men, if you will. <laughs> William, your name is English and Germanic. It means will, desire, like King William. It's been long, strong names that carry the name of William. Eric. Your name, in English, the Irish, means ever ruler, befitting of you, I believe. And for me, my name, Keith, is an English and Scottish deriv derivative, surname of a long line of Scottish earls, means wood. Go figure. <laughs> <laughs> Secondly, an uncomplimentary description or word about somebody is another name, an abusive word or phrase you used to describe somebody, name calling. When you were a child and they called me big head or big feet or whatever they called me by names, nicknames, Scarface or Stinky, whatever nicknames you know, a lot of people went by those. Some derogatory names, they're not nice. Our parents said not to say those things about people. Don't call him that, don't call her that. Profanity. Names of profanity, we know what they are. I don't have to describe. But these names can have an effect on you that can be long-lasting and throughout your life. I just heard on the, on the radio today they were talking about the great 
receiver for the uh, Green Bay Packers, Freeman. Freeman was known as Buttons. <laughs> and they were saying, okay, he's got to be a strong man to go through life known as Buttons. <laughs> but a lot of people, that's who they know him as. And if I said, yeah, do you know Freeman? They would say, oh, Buttons. Then that would be that they would have some close familiarity with this guy. Probably grew up with him, went to school with him, or whatever. But lastly, a name can be our reputation. And the reputation or standing of somebody or something, and that's what we want to let our name speak for. You remember when you were younger, as I did, your mother would tell you or your grandmother would tell you, you keep running with the wrong crowd, you're going to get a bad name. Or your father would tell you, go out, son, and make a name for yourself. <laughs> so it's an importance in having a good name. As we know by brand names and trademarks, Coca-Cola, Nike, McDonald's, General Motors, BP. Any things that affect these names, they can bring some kind of feeling to us as we hear those. If you don't, be don't believe that names feel anything or mean anything to you, Ask these election pain, campaign candidates, as you see their names, solely their names, on these 6 by 12 placards uh, uh, and buried down in people's yards, on roadways, and all these different places that you see them. If you don't think names mean anything, ask Bob Early, O'Malley and Brown, Stephanie Hodge, Kevin Kavanaugh, Julian Jones, all these people that are up campaigning for election of office now. Names mean everything, because that's all you see on these placards, are their names big and bright. Finally, I like to let it be that in our, leg our legacy is in our names. For many of us, there will never be a bridge or a building or a ship bearing our names. Let it be like, like those bridges or buildings, towers or ships, that are supported by concrete and encased by steel, that our legacies rest on the pillars of our relationships reflecting the highlights of our lives, the very best of who we are. For it is in these things that legacies are made of that we may carry a good name.